Okay, now we need to talk about regulation of breathing rate and depth. If you remember back to our lecture on the nervous system, we said the pons and medulla oblongata were in charge of maintaining the respiratory system, and that's true. We have a phrenic nerve there that innervates the uh, diaphragm and tells it when to bow down, when to go up. We don't have to think about breathing because the pons and medulla are always sending these periodic impulses down there to ventilate the lungs, okay? but they can modify the frequency of these impulses and speed them up or slow them down depending on data that they receive from chemoreceptors. So the chemoreceptors are located in blood vessels and elsewhere in the body, and they're monitoring principally carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. The third thing they're monitoring is actually oxygen. You would think we'd really be monitoring oxygen, but we don't. We really are monitoring CO2. So if you are not breathing as fast as you should, your CO2 levels will go up. We call that hypercapnia. But at the same time, if you have high CO2 levels, you probably have low O2 levels. So this is actually okay. The body can really just monitor CO2 as well as pH, right? Because as the body retains more carbon dioxide, remember carbon dioxide causes the blood to become more acidic. So that's going to reduce the pH and lead to more hydrogen ions. Okay, so here's a diagram of what's going on. So first of all, we have chemoreceptors in the brain and also in the blood vessels that are monitoring uh, carbon dioxide. They're monitoring hydrogen ions and to a lesser extent, they're monitoring oxygen. And that's sending input to our breathing center in our pons and our medulla oblongata. Together, these are regulating the rate of motor nerve impulses through our phrenic nerve to our diaphragm, which is bowing down to cause us to breathe in and bowing back up to breathe out. And the diaphragm, lungs, and surrounding tissues have stretch receptors in there that tell us how deeply we're ventilating our lungs because we don't want to overventilate, right? We could potentially burst the lungs. And all of this information is going back to our breathing center. So big picture here is our breathing center is always sending out impulses to our diaphragm to tell us to breathe, but we adjust the frequency of those impulses if we have too much CO2 or too little O2. Okay, welcome back. For our next experiment, we're gonna be investigating the effects of hyperventilation and rebreathing on breath hold time, because both of these are gonna alter the concentration of oxygen and CO2 in our body's systems. So, to do this exercise, you'll need a stopwatch, a paper or plastic bag, and a willing participant. So if you don't have a stopwatch, you can use your iPhone or a simple timer like we have here. Uh, for bags, you can use a paper bag, you can use a plastic bag, as long as something you can breathe into. Okay. Last but not least, make sure your participant is healthy and also is seated. There's a very small chance if they hold their breath too long, obviously they could pass out. So you want them to be comfortable and be able to catch them in case they do. All right, so how this experiment works is we're gonna record your breath hold time, that is the amount of time you can actually hold your breath uh, under these three situations, normal, hyperventilating, and rebreathing. So for a normal uh, ventilation, you're just gonna take a deep breath and then hold it. For hyperventilation, you are going to hyperventilate for 30 seconds prior to holding your breath. And for rebreathing, you're gonna rebreathe for 30 seconds into this bag before holding your breath. It's important that you space these out at least three or four minutes apart because obviously the CO2 you build up in one will affect you in another one. So you want to make sure you're able to get back to your normal CO2 and oxygen saturations before you move on to the next step. So I'm going to get ready and start my first normal breath hold time. So I've got my timer that I'm going to put right here so you can watch it. The other thing that I have here is something called a pulse oximeter. I don't expect you to have those at home, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in there so you can see my oxygen saturation in my bloodstream as I hold my breath. So starting that, and we're going to make sure that comes up to speed. So my saturation's at 97%. I'm going to take one deep breath, and I'm going to start the timer. One, two, three. <gasps> Okay, 47 seconds, and my saturation dropped down to 94. So I'm going to relax for a few minutes, and then we're going to redo that again. Okay, so I've rested up enough from the first trial. Now I'm going to try it again after hyperventilating for about 30 seconds. So it's important you don't hyperventilate any more than a minute because that can lead to alkalosis in your bloodstream. So when we hyperventilate, we're actually getting rid of excess carbon dioxide. We aren't getting any more oxygen on board. So I'm ready to start. I see my oxygen saturation's back at 97, and I won't start my clock until I'm actually holding my breath. So I'll simply hyperventilate for 30 seconds or so, and then hold my breath and start the timer. <sighs> okay. Looks like I made it to a minute 18. My saturation dropped down below 90, so it takes a long time for your saturation to drop. But you can see that hyperventilating did help me to hold my breath a little bit longer because I was off-gassing CO2, 
And as it turns out, CO2 tends to be the most sensitive trigger that your body uses to determine when it's time to breathe again. Okay, now that I've had a chance to rest for a few minutes, we're going to go back and do the third iteration, and this is rebreathing. Now, rebreathing, what I'm going to be doing is breathing into a bag for 30 seconds before I hold my breath. When I'm breathing into the bag, I'm actually depleting myself of oxygen because I'm using up the oxygen in the bag, and I'm also concentrating the CO2 in my system. I breathe it out, but I breathe it right back in. So I'm instituting something called hypercapnia, and we're going to see what effect hypercapnia plus a little hypoxia has on our ability to hold our breath. So Rebreathe in the bag for 30 seconds, maybe a minute if you want to, and then we're going to hold our breath again. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, I didn't even make it 32 seconds, 33 seconds. So that was a lot shorter than the last one where I was hyperventilating and even shorter than the normal one. And the reason is, is that I was starting that breath hold with a lower than normal concentration of oxy oxygen. I was hypoxic because I was breathing just what was in the bag. I was also hypercapnic. I was rebreathing my CO2. So I was starting with a lot more CO2. And remember, CO2 is the primary trigger that uh, our body uses to determine when it's time to breathe again. Now, if you're interested in doing this yourself, all you need is a paper bag and a timer. And if you film yourself doing this experiment and you upload it to Dropbox, uh, I will give you five points extra credit. Good luck.